I was put in foster care when I was around nine years old. I went into foster care when I was 13 years old. My father was physically abusive. My mom was struggling with drugs and it wasn't a good place. My dad, he was in jail most of the time because of his addiction. My parents were not responsible. There was a neglect going on, a lot of neglect. I was at school and uh, the uh, police officer and the guidance counselor at the time, I don't remember her name, sat down and told me what was going on and that I would be put in foster care. My sister and I, we were sat down in the police station while they were looking for a replacement. And it was scary. After like being ripped out of my mom's house, and I was just an emotional wreck. I would always act out, and my foster parent just had enough of it. Um, so she just contacted DCF and had me moved. Unfortunately, sometimes children do have to move abruptly, and oftentimes it's not by their choice or by ours. It could be a circumstance involved in the foster home that children need to move. I was in 11 different homes, but I was also in three of those homes twice. I went through about 10 different foster homes within five years. I've probably been in about 16 different placements. It gets really fuzzy because it, was, it becomes a lot, of, like, a lot of places. I would move, for example, probably from Burlington to Bristol to Colchester to Bethel. And those are like distances. I went to Fairhaven Union High School. I went to Rutland High School. I went to Rutland Intermediate School. Winooski, H.O. Wheeler. To Poultney, to I believe Castleton Elementary as well. Um, goodness. <laughs> Otter Valley, Fairhaven, Castleton, Rutland, Stowe, Lamoille. I'm gonna estimate maybe 10 schools. That's all I can remember off the top of my head. Children and youth have to move out of their home school district at times because we do not have the resources available. We don't have the foster homes available in the school district in which they um, are attending. Overnight, poof, you disappear. I didn't even get a chance to say bye to any of my friends or tell them where I was going. It's like you're a ghost. You're there one minute, and then you come back to school the next day, and, hey, where's my friend that was in foster care? Where'd they go? And you ask around, and due to confidentiality, no one ever tells you what happens to them. It was hard because a lot of my friends were at Rutland at the time, and then I made a lot of friends in Pulteney and got moved to Fairhaven. And the same thing happened, got a lot of friends in Fairhaven, then got moved back to Rutland. After Fairhaven, um, which was the third school in two years, I stopped making friends. Making friends and all that was pretty hard after a while. I kind of gave up on it. You don't have your friends to run in there and be like, man, this happened over the weekend, and I'm not sure how I'm going to handle it. Shutting myself off probably saves me a lot of hurt from just, like, making friendships that aren't going to last. I didn't get to walk at graduation, but that's because I didn't develop any friends at Lamoille, so why walk at a school you don't know anybody in? After a while, my behavior actually became affected by my movements and my not being stable. I had a short fuse. I was stressing out. I had such a major change in my life that I, I wasn't there to focus on academics. I was a miserable kid in middle school. I was the meanest, and through high school too, some of it, just because of stuff. The first time I got in trouble, I really, I just told a teacher to go 
F themselves. I was throwing chairs. I was getting physically abusive. abusive. I actually ended up getting left back ninth grade twice. I was suspended from school within seven days. I was depressed. I just didn't really care about school anymore. You know, I think a lot of these kids are very good at trying to get people to give up on them so that they'll just leave them alone. And so I think to recognize that and respond to that for what it is is important. Yes, they do have survival behaviors that can be really challenging and hard. And they have experienced often trauma, really horrific kinds of traumas. And that affects who they are and how they act upon the world. Having experienced trauma, kids are you know, less uh, available to learn, um, that it's all about meeting basic needs, trying to feel safe and feel a sense of belonging. And then you expect me to sit at a table and do math or do handwriting or not poke my neighbor or not scream or be mad or slam doors or lockers. Like, think about it. As adults, what do we, what, how would we respond if we were in this position? You're not worried about learning anymore. You're worried about how long am I going to be here? Is it worth me trying here when I know, well, there's just another place right down the road that I'm going to be sent to? It increases the dropout rate because in order to want to stay in one place, you need to develop roots. There's plenty of reasons that you can't learn when you get sent to another school. You haven't slept for a while because you're homesick, like that's happened to me. Like, well, you haven't seen your mother or you've been promised to see your mother and you weren't, and that promise is ripped away from you. I had ADHD, I had, I had, I couldn't focus on anything. And the constant movement was, well, we're gonna move you. And a lot of the times I was moved without my medicines. There was no learning with that moving. Every time a student changes schools, they lose four to six months of educational progress because from school to school, the curriculum is not exactly the same. The approach to instruction is not exactly the same. You know, the adjustment period to a new environment, you know, certainly takes away from a student's ability to focus. I missed half of what I needed to learn in English and I never took anything above Algebra one in math. What I was learning at Otter Valley, they were repeating in Fairhaven. And by the time I got to Otter Valley, or um, Rutland, they were doing the same thing that they were doing th two years ago in Otter Valley. Not every school uses the same curriculum. So even though you go from a sixth grade to a sixth grade, depending on how the, st how the structure of the curriculum is set up, you may either be repeating what you've already done, or you may be missing, there may be gaps where you're missing pieces. So it's easy for kids to get discouraged and to just give up. And, and often that's when you start to see some of those behaviors that, you know, come out just to save face. Um, you know, I don't want to be seen as somebody who can't. You can't learn if you don't feel safe. You can't learn if you don't, if you're the loner, if you're the eight ball, the black sheep, there is no learning. And so you add missing big chunks of the academics and then unfamiliar structure, unfamiliar curriculum, unfamiliar teachers, missing relationships, missing their family and their homes, the addition of visitation and all that goes with that, and they're not educationally available. Once a, st a child is taken out of their home, if you can main some, maintain some stability, um, and often that stability you know, gets created in, in the kid's school. Um, I think that's critical to a student being able to continue to progress and be successful um, in their education. We really believe that it's in the child's best interest to stay in their same school because the school staff know this child really well and the child may have behaviors that they display in the school, but the people who know this child are the best equipped folks to deal with this child and, and the behaviors that might be displayed. School really provides that consistent structure and predictability. They know that when you come through the doors of the school, the expectations are gonna be the same. So the benefit of staying in Otter Valley for my first year in foster care was the fact that I grew into Otter Valley in my home. 
So they know my family and I wasn't labeled as that foster kid. And so for children who come into care, they need to remain in their schools so that they feel like that they, so that they have a connection, so that something keeps them grounded. We've got to mitigate the fear. We've got to, you know, help them feel that, that stability, um, that safety, you know, just meet those basic needs in school if that student is going to be available to learn. The challenges that kids face when they live in a different town from where they go to school is how are they going to get there? That we need to identify who is going to transport them and how that transportation is going to get paid for. If you can somehow get someone to transport a kid from their current district to, let's say like with me, from Pulteney to the Fairhaven Union or Fairhaven to Pulteney, that little extra time would make that kid extremely happy. I could have still went to Otter Valley with a fairly short commute. Um, it would it would have been a little more inconvenient for the social worker or the mentor, but it would have been more beneficial for my education. It is a challenge, certainly, for foster parents and teachers and schools to figure out how can this work? How can this work for our students? How can this work logistically, which is really hard? So there are times when the school supports the transportation needs by having a teacher arrive to school early. Uh, maybe some um, school staff will stay later to accommodate for the foster parent or relative's scheduling needs. Every morning somebody from, sometimes it'd be different people, but somebody from DCF would pick us up in the morning, drive us to school, and then our foster mother would drive us back or foster father at the time. I think if schools can be somewhat flexible and if um, DCF can help to rally whatever supports are available and be creative about that, about transportation, um, if foster parents can help each other out to make those kinds of things happen, that those are really, it's important. And I think that it really benefits the children. If for whatever reason they want to stay in their school and that's not a possibility, then they need to be allowed to have time to transition, to say goodbye to their friends, to do the pieces that they need to do, to kind of give them time to kind of grieve the loss of their school and their home and those pieces and so that they can move on. Those students at that former school need to say goodbye and the child needs to be able to say goodbye or see you later or make plans to stay in contact with different members of the school staff or their friends. Then you have some legwork to do to start to help them make connections, to do all those pieces, to talk with teachers, to put all those pieces together so that you have a planned transition. So having foster kids as a welcome committee that are already in the school to welcome in new foster kids, it gives them an instant friendship because they automatically have something in common. And it gives them the comfort of having friends in the school as Folks become more aware and teachers and administrators and communities become more aware of what it looks like and feels like for kids that I think we can create our systems in a way that's going to work. These students are very um, reluctant to trust anybody, reluctant to make any sort of investment. In fact, they're experts at trying to get you to give up on them. And so to have the consistency of, of um, you know, a few adults very invested in your success, I think is critical. Anytime a teacher just reaches out to show that you're still human and you're not just this person that nobody wanted, it definitely helps the student. They will identify for you either in really outright verbal ways or subtle ways, who they really feel connected to. And I think it's really important to rally those people. Mr. Ruby, my uh, teacher at Fairhaven, didn't assume that I was a problem child. He took the time out to treat me like a human and ask me what's going on and how he can better help me. Through seventh and eighth grade, I had Mr. Nerney. He was just a science teacher. He was like the man, kept me on track all the time. 
I did have mentors that helped. I had this one guy, his name was Chuck Bradfield. He taught me how to fill out a drive application. He taught me a firm handshake. It was important. You know, he taught me all these kind of basic things that, that I've kept with me, that's gotten me, helped me. It just helped for a teacher to care about me and basically show me that like, hey, you can do good. You don't have to be like your family. You can become something. We know that relationships are what provides children with the ability to be resilient. And so they really need that. They can then start to trust and develop a relationship that may be the difference between them completing school or becoming a dropout. Listen. To schools, I would say listen. That's the biggest thing. They need to have a voice. They need to be able to say, you know, yes, my old school, my current school is working for me. No, it would be really good to have a fresh start. Kind of what the options are. So now we realize that it's very important to include the youth in these conversations. We need to know what they want, and even if we can't achieve what they want, we need to be able to have that conversation with them to support them through whatever transition is needing to occur next in their life. Having like a support team meeting every month where the foster parent, the social worker, the schools are all involved, guidance counselors, teachers if need be, to talk about grades, just to show this one individual that for one day a month, we're focused on you and what we can do to help you succeed. What do you need? What can I advocate for you? How can I help you? And what would you like to do? What are your goals? Just consult the kids, talk to the kids, because if they feel more included, they care more about what happens to them. Being able to have a voice in your life isn't a privilege that you should be able to lose. It should be a right that you have no matter where you go.